Hi there, I'm Lee and welcome to iMind Blocks. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up an Acroma Masternode. So this is my first time experience setting up a Masternode. So I'm gonna be showing you the whole process step by step. So I'm starting from the very beginning and you can kind of follow along with me and um, we'll get set up with our own Masternode. So like I say, I'm doing this for the very first time, so it's no doubt that we will probably run into a few problems along the way. Uh, but I wanna share the whole process with you so that if we do encounter any problems, you can kind of, we can overcome it together. So let's get started. So on screen, you'll see I have the Explorer address. So this is the address that I'm gonna be using um, to set up our masternode. And you can see the balance here is 5,001. So they say the uh, collateral or the acroma that you need is 5,000, but they have an extra one to cover any sort of uh, transaction costs that I believe are associated uh, with this. Uh, again, on the next tab, um, I've just got the wallet kind of already logged in and uh, ready to go, because we're gonna come back and we're gonna need that at some point. The instructions that I'm using are this uh, wiki GitHub uh, guide. I'll put the links in the video description, of course. Um, so basically follow it down and it tells you the requirements. So it's 5001 um, Acroma. And it also tells you uh, requirements for the uh, virtual private server that you're gonna set up or if you're gonna do it um, at home or like a local instance. Again, the requirements. So we need a single core CPU, uh, a gig of RAM and a 25 gigabyte SSD um, hard drive. It explains some instructions for setting it up on Debian and Ubuntu. I'm going to be setting it up on Ubuntu on a virtual private server. Um, you also need a static IP as well. Um, I'm going to be using a VPS um, because um, although I could set it up here because I say because I don't have that static IP, it's just easier and simpler for me to set it up um, using a virtual private server. So on the next tab, we've got the instructions for setting up on Ubuntu. These are the instructions that I'm going to be following. And it's literally just a case of kind of copy and paste the, the commands over, um, at least in principle. Uh, so the VPS that I'm going to be using is provided by Digital Ocean. I've not used them before, but this seemed to be the cheapest that I found online. So I'm going to be setting up this droplet, I believe. So it's the one gig of memory, one CPU, 25 gig SSD and that's $5 a month. Uh, with Digital Ocean, they give you like $100 credit that has to be used within 60 days. So this is gonna be fine for us to get started for the first two months, and then from there we can just roll over, hopefully at just a $5 a month. Um, also, just to quickly touch on the other tab uh, in Chrome, um, this is the Chroma uh, Discord channel, and this is where I've been getting quite a lot of information from. Um, it's also a good place to go if you need any support um, or anything like that. Okay, so the first thing I believe that we're going to need to do is to set up our uh, VPS. So like I said, we're going to be going for this option here, this one gigabyte. So let's uh, start. Um, like I say, I've not used this before, so we need to kind of uh, create an account. Okay, so we've just entered our card details. So it says that we've uh, been credited with $100 to use within the next 60 days. So that's cool. Okay, so now we wanna set up our first uh, droplet. So we click on create droplet. And then we wanna select our version of Ubuntu. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it as the default selected version. And then we're gonna choose the top one. So one gigabyte, one CPU, 25 gig SSD, $5 um, a month. Um, enable backup, so I'm gonna select yes. Um, it's one extra dollar, but it helps um, if I need to clone it or something, hopefully that should help. Um, sort that out. Then we've got add block storage. So if you go to add volume and then attach existing, so we should be able to select this one. And then um, London, we don't need any of the other options. And we just need to add a name. So a chroma hyphen MN. Let's uh, create that and hopefully that all goes through. Okay, so you can see that this VPS has been set up now. I think we can click and it shows a few extra details about it. Okay, so our VPS is set up. We've got some basic information and also the IP address. Uh, that just confirms backups are enabled. And then here we've got uh, various 
tools or applications where we can access it and uh, manage it, etc. So I'm just going to go to my email because uh, in here we've got some access details. Okay, so now our VPS is set up, we should be able to uh, continue on. So going back to the uh, wiki guide. Um, okay, so I think we're ready to continue on. So let's try it. So this is going to be our first command. So we're going to change the username rather than using the root. Okay, so we have our VPS set up. So now we'll try and access it using the console. So we select this access console. And then we want to try and log in. So the password was the one that was emailed to us. Um, it appears that you can't copy and paste. At least that's my perception. Let me just quickly try it one more time. No, you can't. So I'm sorry to all you uh, experts out there. This is uh, a little new to me. So I'm just going to type it manually. Okay, so it asks for the current password, so I need to retype it all again, which is kind of a pain. Hopefully I got that right. Okay, and our new password. Okay, that should be a lot easier for next time. Cool, so I can close that now. Right, now going back to the uh, guide, we should be able to make some progress now. So it says that they recommend don't run it as the root user, so we need to create like a secondary user. So we should be ready to start entering our command. So I'm just gonna copy it and paste, and we'll sort of uh, continue on. No, does a uh, does copy and paste not work? That's going to be a bit of a problem. So then we're going to need to. Um, can we not? Um, okay, so we need a different program to access this console because we can't copy and paste, and that means that they'll have to then. Kind of manually type everything and it's quite a lot to type so um, I prefer not to do that um, so let's get another program that we can use um, I've used something before um, can't remember what the name of it was but I'll try and find that program okay I remember the program that I've used previously so it was called a uh, putty so just download and install that and then it asks for your um, IP address of the VPS that you want to connect to, so just copy and paste that across, and then um, open. So we're logging as root, and then our new password, and then now we are connected. So that is cool. Um, so this allows us to um, copy and paste, so it should be a bit easier. Whereas the other console would not let us for some reason. So we just right click, and then we can paste the. Uh, the commands. Okay, cool. So now we can add in our next user. So I'm just going to use the defaults. Okay, I'm just going to press enter. And yes, continue. So 
So we've created that user. Now we need to next command. Okay. And then this. So hopefully from here on it should just be all copy and paste in. Um, okay, so now we can switch to that user. Maybe like that. Okay, cool. So now we've switched user. So we've switched the the, the Chroma user. So like I say, I'm I'm new to this uh, Linux type stuff. I'm not not that good of it. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, so we can switch that user or, or exit and create a new connection. So we have already connected as that user. So next command. If you just right click it, it paste automatically. So this is going to update the um, packages or the software. Okay, that's completed, so let's do the next one. Okay, so now we need to add in this uh, system MD. that in there. Um, okay, so this is the kind of the first problem. So it says that uh, permission is denied. Um, I wonder if we run it as I don't know if you can do it like that. I'm kind of guessing. Um, okay, I think that went for free. Uh, and then this command. So it's changing the permissions on that. Let's add in the sudo again. Okay, so I think that's worked. Uh, next part. Okay, so this part we need to add, do it. So it's going to run a service as um, this user, which is the a Chrome user, not as the root. I think that's right. So we're going to paste that in there. Uh, add sudo and then paste it. Um, it says a valid username. That is our username. So I'm kind of, is it? maybe um, case sensitive um, I 
Okay, um, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe we just need to do it like that. And maybe it kind of auto completes that. I'm not, I'm not too sure if that's how it works. I'll try it like that. Okay, that seems to be kind of working. So the Chroma uh, master node is supposed to be one of the easiest ones to set up. Um, and so far it's kind of going okay. So we'll see whether we can continue on with it. So the next steps are optional. Uh, optional. So we'll wait till this finish as then we should be able to start the master node and enable reboot and stop it if we want. Okay, so let's see if we can start it first. Okay, so we're just back to the, uh, the main command. There's no confirmation and the next one is to enable it to uh, restart on reboot okay and it says that you can also stop it um, but let's check it out so this one says should display something about the service hopefully let's go back to that terminal window Okay, so it looks like it's downloading the uh, blockchain, so I guess that's a good indicator. Okay, it says uh, if we are upgrading off, we're not chose to add an RPC using them password, we can stop here, otherwise, uh, continue and edit your mastermind. Um, I'm not sure if we do want to add this or not. I think simplicity, we might be able to skip it. But I think if we add it, um, it connects via like an API so we can kind of see uh, more information about it. So I might actually go back a step and see if we can... Um, did we not create it or is there somewhere to add that step? Sorry. Okay, so we can use this command here to add in a... Um, RPC connection, so I think that's probably a good thing to do. Uh, let me just go to the notepad, we'll paste this in here first. So we'll add in a user. That's going to be our details there. And copy that, and then we'll paste that into the uh, terminal. Oh, um, how do I? Mm, I'm not sure how I stop or break out of this. Is it just can I just use like Control and C and get out of that, or does that close the whole thing? Oh no. Okay, it goes back. Right, now we can paste in our RPC details. Uh, so again, sudo, and then paste those details. Um, it asks for some valid RPC user details, so what yeah, so does that RPC user need to be the same? It shouldn't need to be the same as what's the uh, the current user on there, should it? So, um, I'm just going to try that and just sort of see.
okay, it looks like that password has now been cleared. So I need to use the same um, user details as we set up in the original part. Okay, so while that's going, we'll continue um, on. So masternode registration. So it says login to the Chrome website. Um, so I guess we need to sign up first. Okay, so we're signed into the Acroma website and it says to go to masternodes and then I guess create masternode. So then I guess we need to fill in these uh, details. So let's find out how we do that. So Okay, so some more uh, commands. Let's we'll start here. Let's see that again. So that's the first part. I think I'm finished with that anyway for the time being. Don't need the notepad. Okay, so now we've got our first lot of details. So we've got this uh, enode ID, so we can copy that. Don't need a space in front of it. So we're gonna copy that. Um, to the website. So there's our eNode ID. Our IP address, we can copy that. We'll paste in our IP address. The port should be the default port. Um, so our wallet address is this. 5001 Acroma. Just so going to paste our wallet address there. And the uh, RPC user not sure what it's saying invalid address that's could be a problem uh, so our user was call the user I'll put the password in just a second. I'm uh, just confirming that those details match up. 8545, 8545, and the IP address 178128171212. Okay. Oh, that's why it's got an extra white space on the end of it. Uh, now we'll enter our RPC password. So that's um, hashed out, so that's cool. Um, now we can create the master node. I guess let's just double check on those instructions. Um, so there's just a few extra bits that we need to add into that. Um, oh, the node port is default anyway, so let's just double check. So it should be 8545, that's what we had. 8545, yeah, so we're using a default port. Uh, help, we're not gonna need that. So we've uh, copied all that, so we've got all of our details. Okay, so it says, uh, must allow incoming traffic to your master nodes. Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to assume it has 
we might have to come back and fix the uh, firewall. And then uh, we, are, we are on a static IP, we know that. So the next part is masternode verification. So let's, um, let's create this masternode. Okay, so we've got a few details here. So we've got masternode one, sorry, 1611. It says that we are pending. So I think we need to now verify this. So going back to the guide again. So how do we get verified? So it says consists of one user interaction. This is sending a transaction from your account to the same account. Um, hang on, what? let me read this again, <laughs> slowly. It sort of made sense, but then didn't. So, verification of your master node consists of one in user interaction. This is sending a transaction from your account to the same account, that's fine. That is the account being used by the master node. Uh, any amount of a chroma along with the transaction data represented as transaction data on the unverified masternode detail page. Okay, so we need to get this transaction data here. Let's copy, make sure we copy that without the white space. And then what we need to do is send a transaction to ourself. So we're gonna add in the data first. Then we're gonna copy our own address. I'm gonna paste it to address. The amount that we're gonna send is uh, let's just do 0.1 a chroma so we're going to be sending it back to ourselves, but with this data tag and then we're going to generate this transaction and just confirm that so that's been broadcast to the network okay it says the background job is run uh, every 20 minutes to verify the master node so then it should be picked up within 20 minutes um, and then from there, we should be kind of good to go. So I'm just going to stop here, take a break. We'll leave it for 20 minutes. We'll come back and we'll see how we're doing from that point. Okay, so I've just hit the refresh button and we are now verified. So I guess now it's just a case of uh, leaving it running and watching that cache uh, roll in. So um, I will be doing updates from this point onwards and we'll see how we get on in terms of our re rewards um, stuff over time. But that looks like it, so I'm gonna close down all the windows now and we'll just sort of leave it running and we'll check back on it periodically and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Cool, I'm excited. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing how this performs. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. So I know it was a bit um, choppy with a lot of copy and pasting going backwards and forwards, but hopefully you kind of guys uh, got the general idea of how to set this up. So this has been me setting up my very first master node and I wanted to kind of share the whole experience with you. So it's been quite exciting and I'm looking forward to seeing the results um, as we go on. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are gonna be asking me about earnings and things like that. Um, I'm not gonna state exactly what the earnings are in this video because it's gonna change over time as we go forward. Um, so the best way to check is just probably on the Discord chat. You can um, type in a few commands on the Discord bot and it will tell you what your master node earnings is gonna be uh, into the future. So that's probably the best way to uh, work it out. Um, from this point onwards, um, I'll do periodic sort of updates over time um, and see what those earnings are on a month by month sort of uh, basis. And we'll see how we got on with that. Um, also, it's been a really good experience for me um, getting set up with this master node. So if it's something that you guys are interested in, um, I'll probably be setting up more master nodes uh, in the future. I like the concept of them. And now that I've kind of done this one, it's quite good. And um, I'm more familiar with the process. I'm, I'm more uh, confident um, to set up more in the future. So that's it. Any questions or comments, or if you get stuck or into trouble, uh, put those all in the comments area and I'll do my best to reply and try and help you guys um, out. And um, if there's anything specific that you want to know or didn't understand properly, um, let me know. And again, um, I'll try and uh, clarify those details. So that's it. Um, me setting up my very first master node. Uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you like the video and um, if you do like this type of content, give it a like, subscribe and um, all that other good stuff. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.